So I want to surprise you with a gift. You ready? This is the part where like an interior illusion slams where they roll out the TVs. Okay, can we ask you about that lip sync, girl? How was it like for you? Shall we try this again? You know what they say, girl. The sun never sets on an all-star. The sun never sets on an all-star. Last time I mentioned it, you like, I do too, it's the quote of the season. Miss <laughs> RuPaul said it, I heard it. I'm clued in now, I get it. But look, the sun truly never sets on an all-star. Honey, look at the sun coming in on me. And the kid said, look at her, she's frozen. <laughs> the face crack. You know what they say, girl? As one person once said, the sun never sets on an all-star. <laughs> and whoever says that also believes that the Earth is flat because, you know, the Earth rotates, so there is a sunset, you know, WTF. That's right, honey, it's time to get sickening with bootleg opinions. Hey, squirrel friends, when one video ends, just watch another one. It's called cringe viewing. I support you. And how was the graduation, mama? Oh girl, I had no idea you graduated. Did you graduate in secrecy? Cause you know what they say, once you go bootleg, you go all stars. It was definitely the secret accelerated program. That's right, I couldn't let you know she had signed that lovely, uh, what's it called? Uh, not affidavit. DNA. A DNA? No, an NDA. An NDA, yes, that's what I had signed, girl. And I felt so silly because we did a whole year of bootleg together and I was so freaking clueless. Literally, I was watching the episode, reveal the lipstick assassin. And girl, you jumped out of heaven. I was gagged. I was literally sitting in my bathtub watching. Girl, the water splashed up. I was screaming. I love it. I'm so glad you were gagged and gooped and everything gorgeous in between. And you know what they say, girl? You have won All Star 6 without even being a cast member. You have brought that lip sync to life. You and Trinity. Well, thank you, sister. You know, I really wanted to go back to the show, but I wanted to do it my own way. And I'm very proud of what I left on that stage. And I hope that I will be returning next as a choreographer. Now, so much have happened to you in the past few months. You've been on a McDonald's ad in Times Square. You've came out as trans. You've been a lip sync assassin. You are fabulous. So now, I want to give you a little bit of a surprise because you've been a member of Bootleg Opinions for a very long time now. So I want to surprise you with a gift. You ready? This is the part where like an interior illusion slams where they roll out the TVs. I love gifts. Let's do it. So, on behalf of Bootleg Opinions and Make It Shimmy, I want to present you $2,000 for your transition to start off. Oh my God. You are kidding me, right? No, I'm not kidding you. It says literally, well, the name is spelled incorrectly because I did it at 3 a.m. <laughs> in the morning. So it says like Garja Estraja, but it is a valid check, girl. You are not giving me $2,000. Why don't you think we have $2,000? <laughs> oh my god, well, it's called bootleg. Who is this coming in on our Zoom call? Right now, I introduce you the Vice President of Guarantee Rate. He has also supplied <laughs> so $1,000 to you and me $1,000. And we're gonna start off the GoFundMe and hopefully we'll raise about twenty dollars to $25,000 just for you oh to my start god. off your transition. That is so sweet, you guys. I, I can't believe that this is real. Of course it's real, girl. Now, next time when I see you, you better not drive a new car. That's all I'm saying, girl, okay? You better not drive a new car. You better not have some new shoes. Oh my God. Sister, this is so special. I'm truly so gagged, you guys. Thank you. Don't be gagged. Now, Shimmy, do you want to say anything to our star over here? Of course. Oh my God, this is such an honor, by the way, Lagandra. I have been just kind of a super fan for a long time and I actually met you in Playa del Carmen when you were there with the House of Edwards a while back and we took some pictures and hung out. I actually have a son who's 18 and he is trans, his name is Ryan, female to male and I've been through this journey with him of transitioning and the emotions that go with it. And one thing I know that someone that is looking to go through this process needs that love and support that a parent could give, a best friend could give. And it's just so important that you are out there and sharing this with others and letting people know about your journey. And so for me to come in and you know help this GoFundMe start is really just an honor. I'm so gagged. 
Thank you so much, Jimmy. That is so sweet. Oh my God. Don't be gag, girl, because you're truly a role model, not just for me, but for many people out there. You have shown me literally to live your life authentically, no matter what people think of you since season six. So thank you so much for all the work that you've done. And I know you've been a huge part of Bootleg Opinions, and I want to say a huge, huge, huge <laughs> thank you for providing yourself and your time to me and for the viewers out there. We cannot thank you enough. Oh my God, I just wish I could give you the hugest hug right now. Like, I'm seriously so overwhelmed with emotion. I am usually never gagged. I always have something to say, but I am just so shocked by this gesture and it just means the world to me because I would never start something like this for myself. So the fact that you're doing this is just incredible because let's face it, transitioning is very expensive. I had no idea. Luckily, I feel very gorgeous as I am and my current skin. But that being said, there are lots of different things that I would like to do, including and starting with electrolysis. And after looking at how expensive it was, I was like, I'm going to have to go back to maybe laser away because they are being so kind and offering to sponsor that for me. It's been a little bit stressful wondering and worrying about how I'm going to really make this transition happen for me financially. So this is just so incredibly kind and I just wanna say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to both of you. I love you and I promise this will be money well spent. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna emphasize, I better not see you with a new car in two months, okay? I love my bootleg Nissan. You ain't gotta worry, sis. <laughs> and me and Shimmy are turning off our ACs for the rest of the summer to make this happen, okay? <laughs> well, girl, you always make me turn off my AC for these videos, so finally, I can't wait to have some. And I also wanna emphasize by saying thank you to Shimmy over here. You, my dear, you are also a huge part of the drag community here in New York City before you moved out to Chicago. Do you want to talk about a little bit about your company? Yeah, of course. So I do mortgages. That means I'm helping people buy homes and not everybody can go and afford that studio in New York. You need someone to help you out with that. I'm the one that'll help you out. You can always give me a holler. My phone number is 844-SHIMMY-B. You can find me on Instagram at makeitshimmy, which is make underscore it underscore shimmy. Fabulous. And you can find all those information in the links in the description below. And thank you, Shimmy, for providing $1,000 from you. Thank you so much, my love. Not the check being upside down, girl. We are so bootleg. <laughs> but it is green, though. I made sure it is green because if it's not green, you're probably not what? Interested. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Shimmy. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. I also have a bunch of uh, billboards around Boys Town, so you might recognize me from my mortgage billboards with drag queens, supporting other LGBTQ charities. So when you do go to Instagram, liking any of my billboards, I always will give donation to charity for every like on any of those. So I'd love for you to go check it out. I know you has a couple of them to throw out there. Oh yeah, you donated to Drag Queen Story Hour, the one that I uh, mentioned to you before. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, of course. But thank you so much for joining us, Shimmy. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Good luck, Laganja. I'm gonna be uh, with you on this journey. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. Have Mwah. a good day, honey. You too, thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Honestly, you mean the world to a bunch of people out there, and you have definitely showed us that everybody's journey is different because it's not just about aesthetics as well, but it's also about emotionally and mentally Amen. as well. So Amen. you can do whatever you want with it, okay? As much work you want to do or as little work as you want to do with it. Most people don't realize is that when you're in transitioning, there's also a recovery gap as well, where you don't get to work, where you don't get to make right. any income. So it's gonna come in handy. And if y'all wanna contribute, the link is in the description below. Thank you, sister. Seriously, that was such a gag. I'm just, I can't even believe it. I can't. <laughs> well, you better believe it because what? It is time to go on to All Star 6, honey. Have you been keeping up, darling? I have been keeping up and I can't wait to get on to these loops. These looks I was actually very intrigued by because a lot of them looked really good, honestly, because usually half looks good, the other half I'm like, eh, whatever, but today, all these looks look fantastic. Honey, the girls came correct. It's gonna be hard to find a critique up in here, but I have a feeling you and I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> because what? We're not just bootleg opinions, we're petty opinions. <laughs> now, category for this runway is, oh my god! Okay. Why are you screaming? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Is it really called, oh my god? Yeah, you think I'm kidding? No, I just wondered if it was like, category is, oh my god. Or did he really go, oh my god? 
I have no idea. But all I know is that every week she says, Welcome to hilarious Ross Matthews. <laughs> Ross gets the same introduction every week, girl. At least for Michelle and Carson, it's like something different every week. But like for Ross, it's always the hilarious Ross Matthews. Maybe she was tired of the gay jokes. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you noticed, Laganja, I've been straightening my teeth. Yes, honestly, sister, I really have noticed. I was like, did she get fillers or what did she do? She looks so pretty today. It's Your teeth look amazing, for real. Whenever I lip sync, the first thing that people notice is my smile. So having a great, perfect smile is very important to me. Which is why for the past few months, I've been using Bite. And I have 11 sets of aligners out here. That lets me know that I have to change my aligners every week. Now here is week one, and I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of how easy it is to put these on. So this is my top aligner. There you go. Bottom one, here we go. So get yourself an impression kit for only $25. That is 75% off if you use code Yuhua. And if you don't qualify as a candidate, you get your money back, guaranteed. So we first up have Ginger Min, who I thought this spectacular in the acting challenge. And I think she looks cute over here. She's giving us that little girl in a horror story with her little voodoo doll. And I think she's dressed in like her nutty tidy ready about to go to bed. I love the beautiful hair. I love the sequin on the lace material. I love the needles on the voodoo doll. And I thought she was really selling it down the runway. This is now top eight and I'm gonna be extra petty, okay? are the boots. I don't think the boots really fit into this because the dress is really low and the boots came up kind of high and it kind of made her seem like she had no legs, which for us some bootleg opinions is all about the legs, right? I would have done like a really short shoe or like a dance shoe or like a children's shoe so that it reflects more of that character age that she's going for. And I think she could have amped it up the makeup a little bit more so that it reads a little bit more goth. But overall, great look. Well, I definitely agree with you. It is a very strong look and I like how she's really staying true to herself and with the silhouette and sort of the whole vibe of the look. Now, I kind of disagree with you about the shoe. Now, I agree on the fact that it is not the most flattering and it would have been nice to see some leg. However, I think it really fits the look and it gives me that goth child vibe. So I kind of am okay with it, even though it's not a shoe I would wear. Just saying. Now, I also would have liked to have seen a more gothic approach to the makeup. I think this was a great place for her to step out of her comfort zone and really take us to a dramatic, dark glam vibration. But I do think- vibration. She <laughs> but I do think she looks really good. I have another little nitpicky petty thing. I wish she had taken one of those needles that's in her doll and put them in her hair. I think that would have been a cute little tie over to bring in the whole pin doll idea. But I really like the accessory and I really like what she's giving us. Oh, you know what I just noticed as well? It's actually wearing the same outfit as she's wearing. So I think that would have been cool. We got the adult version and we also got the doll version. I think she could have even given us a black lip. I don't even think she really needed to do that much different to her makeup, but a nice black lip to match the black lip of her voodoo doll would have been a chef's kiss. Up next, we have Miss Eureka, honey, and she is giving us hair for days. It's kind of giving me the Bride of Frankenstein hair. I also really like the makeup too. It's kind of giving me, um, what's that one scary movie? RuPaul's Drag Race. I was thinking more whatever happened to baby Jane. It's real rough and sketchy and scary and cool, you know? Yeah, okay, so besides the hair, what do you think of the outfit? Well, the outfit's very black. It's giving me... <laughs> <laughs> Miss Eureka is always incredible at giving us body and I love that she represents for the bigger girls. I think she's always got an incredible silhouette to every look that she puts together. But for me, I guess this look is a little simple. It's not really giving me a lot to critique because it's not really that crazy for her. I think this is actually kind of toned down for Eureka. I think she looks fine. I think she could have played with the shape a little bit more with the see-through mesh material at the bottom. I wish it could have gone all out, honestly, because her hair is so high, right? But other than that, I don't really have much to say either because it's a simplistic version of Eureka. I think she can do more. And we all know she can do more. But is it serving God? Sure. And what did you think of the shoe? I can't really see the shoe. <laughs> I think the shoe is a little small. It's giving me a little kitten heel. I feel like if she was gonna go with that, she should have taken us more to the witch shoe and given us the buckle on the front. Yeah. That's all I get. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Next up oh. is Trinity K. Bonet. Wow, 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 wow. She's serving us ruffles and frills and shapes and Met Gala and whatnot. 
She's got the headpiece with the feathers. She's got the ruffles throughout. I think she's giving great shape, great drag. This is kind of the makeup that I was referring to Ginger that I wish she could have done. Something a little bit more goth and less glam. I think this look has amazing runway appeal. I mean, the minute she turned that corner, I was like, wow, this is drama. And that is what we're looking for on RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars season six. You know what I'm saying? Now, I love the ruffles. I feel like somewhere Rosé is just bitter. She she did not get to have this look on her season. I mean, this is the correct way to rock the ruffle. I think the way that she's got it snatched in so that you can see her shoulders and everything, it just looks really elegant. And I also agree with you, her makeup is spot on. I love that lower PC lash. I think that's a classic goth look that I really, really love. And I like how the hat is almost sort of reminiscent of Beyonce. I feel like it's something we would totally see her favorite icon in. So I love that she's bringing that back yet again. Very formation. All right, ladies, let's get in formation. Up next, we have the ever so stunning Raja O'Hara, honey. And she is giving me puss, 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 puss. Now, I believe the category was, oh my goth. So uh, for me, this is a miss. Although I love the look and I think she looks gorgeous, I feel like she looks like she's ready for a Saturday evening out. I don't necessarily get goth from the look. I agree with you. I was just gonna say that she looks like she's having a night out. You know what I mean? This looks like any girl on a night out, not just a drag queen. She has her pointy corset, she's got her pants, she's got her beautiful hair but it just wasn't serving me a Drag Race eleganza. It was more serving me more like meet and greet. She looks fine, nothing wrong with it, but it just wasn't loud enough compared to the rest of the girls down the runway. Even if she had like a different uh, makeup on, I think that would have amped up a little bit more. I agree, and I do love that she wore pants because again, this is such a different silhouette that we rarely see on the runway. However, it just didn't take it to that next level. I mean, when we look at Trinity, look at the drama she brought out immediately. Whereas when we're looking at Raja, we're just thinking, gosh, she looks pretty. Next up is Miss Akira C. Davenport, wow, 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 wow. We see the scales from the headpiece to the bust, how it's framing her bust beautifully and how they're shaping and carving out her waist as well. And it's giving her absolutely beautiful shape. Absolutely fabulous. This is serving me fashion, drag, and goth. And I also like that she has the cross on the headpiece because what? The category is oh my goth, right? A plate on oh my goth. So she has like the cross on top. And I also like that she has the really tall platform heels because this is not something we expect from a curator. So I thought she looked great. I couldn't agree more, sister. I am absolutely obsessed with her oh my goth look. I mean, this is exactly what we like to call hitting it on the nail or hitting it on the head. I'm not for sure. How's your head? Anyways, I'm obsessed. I live the black scales, the cross in the hair, the silhouette, the shininess of the material, the way she's serving it, the tallness of the boots, the blackness of the black. I live. You live, honey. And I also love the fact that the hair is pushed to the back so that we see the head piece. And also it doesn't interfere with the neck piece and also the bust. Why are you laughing? Girl, I was just crazy for that critique and you were just like, and we're moving on and I'm just gonna continue. Like you didn't even react to me acting crazy. <laughs> girl, I don't know if you know, but I've done over 150 book like opinions, girl. <laughs> She's like, I've heard it all, I've seen it all, I just let the editor roll. I'm like RuPaul at this point. Even if you set yourself on fire on the other side of the camera, I'd be like, girl, all right, girl, at least we got the footage, girl. <laughs> Maybe we'll get an Emmy today. <laughs> oh my God, I'm dying, okay. Next up Ooh. is Jan, 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 Jan. And what a good way for her not to wear purple this week because she's what? Wearing black, this is the way to do it. She totally served us goth, spooky, horror, black fashion and drag. She was really selling it and really feeling the look and really enjoying it because when she was walking down, she was holding it and really playing the character. We see the gothic makeup and the hair and the material and the artistry of the headpiece as well. I love the KJ on the bone, on the shoulders. It gives very Victorian era for me. And this is the perfect way to do it with the lace. It is absolutely sexy and beautiful. And the shoes, my gosh, she looks stunning in this. And oh, she's got the, the 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 thing on her head. Anagram? I don't know. Is an anagram the thing that's the thing like the star with the circle? An anagram is when you switch letters around to make another word. Oh, what? Pentagram. Oh, pentagram. It's called a pentagram. I only know Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> or Telegram if you're naughty. Do you know Telegram? Uh -huh. 
I love how this look has woken you up, mama. You were feeling this and I'm feeling you feeling this. I too adore this spooky ooky kooky look. You can tell that her best friend Andrew absolutely had his hand in the pot when it came to creating this look. It's brilliant, it's beautiful. I love it because it's spooky in the face, couture in the body, and drag all the way through. I mean, I just think she looks phenomenal. And again, this is a total knockout for me from hair to makeup to look to silhouette to the material used. I mean, she looks amazing. I'm super duper excited for this look for her because compared to what she wore last week, this is totally a game changer. And in the back, she always referenced back to her backpack and she has a little coffin in the back as her backpack, right? Gorgeous in this. Lovely. Up next, we have Kylie Sonique Love, and baby, do I love this look. Okay, talk about the body, Audi Audi. I am loving the latex cutouts. I'm loving her hair. I'm just loving this. This is giving me sex kitten, slutty, scary woman mama. I'm a little bit underwhelmed by this. I think she looks great though. I know she's a bootleg girl. I know she's beautiful and gorgeous, but I think to me it's just a bodysuit with holes in it. I wish you could have had like a prop or something, a whip or something, you know what I mean? I think I need a little bit more than just a bodysuit with holes in it. Now that you've given that critique, I'm like, okay, I see where my sister's going with this. I think I'm just so excited we finally have such a fierce body queen on the show and I just live for seeing that because I feel like it's such a trans liberation. However, I totally see what you're saying. That is kind of like a one of those stripper outfits you could buy in a box. I mean, it wouldn't be made out of latex. <laughs> it wouldn't box. be made out of latex, but it is totally a little like simple. I see it. Even if she had like long nails, like, Ooh. you know what I mean? Something. But nonetheless, she looks fabulous. Next up is Pandora Box. Wow, we see the veil at the top. It almost seems like she's going to a funeral almost, slash wedding. She's got her handkerchief to cry on. And also when she closed up that veil at the top. And this is the type of makeup that I was referencing with some of the queens before, you know, that I referenced a little bit more goth. And I think she absolutely pulled it off. Now this can also read costumey a little bit, but I think that she added so much material and shape to the bottom and also the veil with the proportions that I think she looks stunning. Well, I do agree. This look does read a little bit theater for me, but you know what? It's Pandora. And I think, again, this is very much her aesthetic. She's into the camp. She's into the over the top. Whereas Trinity had a more fashion forward approach. I really like this classic approach. I think just like you said, she's giving me religion. She's giving me almost like a coffin shape with that headpiece up top and the way it kind of slenders down and then bells out again. I agree with you. The makeup is very spooky, classic with the dripping of the black in her eyes. I love the dark wine on her lip. I think this is really dramatic and exactly like what you said, this is what I'm expecting from the all-stars. I want to see big silhouettes. I want to see risk taking and I want to see true to you. And our favorite look is Jan, 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 Jan. She is the most goth, woo. And on my Patreon, I let my Patreon members select their favorite look and they have chosen Kylie Sonic Love. Woo. Okay, can we ask you about that lip sync, girl? How was it like for you? Girl, it was honestly very stressful. If you haven't seen on YouTube, I have a whole BTS of the making of my assassination where you can see literally how many steps I went through to create that one look. You know, that's probably the most expensive look I've ever had made for me. Thanks to all of you buying my merch, I was actually able to pay back that costume, which I never thought in a million years would happen. So I'm so grateful for that. It was just nerve wracking for me. I knew this would be a big return. I knew all eyes would be on me, expecting me to turn it and win that lip sync and I didn't want to mess up. I mean, I was almost positive I would win, but you know, you just never know who you're going to be up against. And when I saw Trinity, I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to buck the house down. And she did. Every time I kept turning over, I just kept seeing her go, 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 go. So I was, I was stressed out the whole time, but you know what? When it was over and RuPaul announced that I was the winner or the win stress, I was just so relieved and I felt so good. And you know, I really left feeling proud of myself, which I left proud the first time around, but this was such a different way because I really did leave as a winner, you know, in my eyes and in theirs. 
Right, and you definitely went back the way that you wanted because for a long time, I know me, myself included, have wanted to see you back onto All Stars and you keep saying, well, I don't really want to go back as a cast member. I don't really want to compete anymore because it's not good for you mentally. And most people don't realize this, it's a lot of stress and it's a lot of financial burden as well. So, and you definitely did and you made your mark and you were, again, the only queen to have Chance away. Yes, Chance? honey, I chasseed away. <laughs> Yes, honey, and you have on the reel from the season the most views on when you jumped onto that stage of 2.2 million views. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Really? I'm the most yeah, viewed right. reel on RuPaul's Drag Race? Yes, from All Star 6. Yes, even more than a promos, girl. Wow. That That's the is last so time cool. I checked, but like. It could be more than 2.2 million now. My friend's checking right now, don't worry. We'll have a final calculation before the end of the video. <laughs> and you danced your ass off, including that move when you, how do I put this? You jumped up with your legs and then you kind of curved on the like floor, like a rubber band. I was like, oh my God, that is sexy. We call that a kip up into a worm. And I just got the official calculation. It's at 2.9 mil. Oh. So y'all go run it up and make it three. So it is actually the most highest viewed reel this whole year, including season 13, UK, and All Stars. Look at you, girl, with one episode. Oh my gosh, don't make me cry again, please. Okay, I gotta keep this makeup on for my show tonight. I want you to cry again, here, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, seriously, thank you so much. Oh, girl. You're here for bootleg, and bootleg is always here for you, girl. <laughs> I'm proud to be a bootleg forever and always. So where can we find you, Laganja? <laughs> you can find me on all platforms at Laganja Astranja. You can also find me on TikTok at the only Laganja Astranja. And of course, on my Patreon backslash Laganja Astranja. Hey y'all, here is my moment of grace while well, be saying thank yous to those who have tipped me. And this is the part where I look extremely desperate. So I have to say thank you to Jamie Tanasaka, not to be confused with Yuwa Hamasaka. Artemis Andrew, thank you so much, and hello to you and Cypress, Cypress, and also have Catherine Haywood, there's always time for wood. Brian Yuen, fun fact, I've been to your city several times, but you've never came to my show. Not much of a fun fact, but more of me being extra petty. Till next time, y'all, thank you again, bye!